Right, this week we're going to build a function generator based on a design from the site Technoblogy, uh, which is put together by David Johnson Davies. Um, just an excellent website if you're interested in simple, um, beautiful projects that David has put together. Uh, a lot based on the ATiny85 and um, all the codes provided. He's just done a magnificent job. It's quite a resource. So this one caught my eye uh, a while ago when I was looking at function generators and uh, as you can see it's very simple just a few components a rotary encoder a tiny 85 and then an OLED display and uh, and so I thought well I'll have a go at building this and I've built a couple now and uh, given that we've just been looking at um, function generators on this uh, site uh, on this channel so I thought well let's um, let's put it together so this is the code that uh, David uh, provides and uh, there's quite a bit of information in the code including things like calibration. Uh, he's got the suggestions there for what to choose in terms of the uh, bootloader uh, options. So um, I'm just going through those now, making sure that it's all as David suggests and then burning that bootloader onto the ATiny85 compiling the code and uh, and flashing it to the microcontroller. So we're right to go for a, uh, a build now and, uh, and put this function generator together. Here's the ATiny85 based function generator from David's site. So the ATiny85 here is the heart of it. It's uh, already been flashed with the program so um, all we need to do now is just put all this together and uh, and test it let's do that so i'm doing a time lapse here and uh, all was going well until i ran out of space on the ipad so we get uh, a little way along the build so just putting in the resistors and capacitors at this stage testing the capacitor and uh, and then putting in the adapter the dip 8 adapter for the a 85 oh and we're out so unfortunately the um, mm, ran a bit of space when I was doing the uh, the capture so we didn't get to see all of it but this is the finished product um, so yeah, pretty neat and tidy unit that uh, he's designed here. Um, so what we'll do now is I think I might um, plug this in and uh, and see if we can't get some nice uh, signals out of it. I'll hook it up to a um, oscilloscope to start with, just to check those traces. And then what we might do is, uh, yeah, we might hook it up to a speaker and see if we can make some noise. Is this project doomed? Here's, the, here's some good news and some bad news. Good news, all right, first let's start with that. So uh, giving it five volts, and uh, we can see that we do have a sine wave at around 100 hertz. If you want it exactly 100 hertz, there's, um, if you have a look at the code, you have the option there of doing a calibration. So um, I'm not gonna worry about that at this stage. And if I flick through, so I just this is the push button now, just flicking through all the different waveforms, same frequency. Okay, so that's beautiful. And noise. All right, so I'll go back to the lovely sine curve. So that's all good. Everything's working fine, uh, except uh, this OLED. Now, I, I knew I had a dud OLED, and uh, so what I um, should have done probably is um, test it beforehand. But uh, I didn't, so um, but I did bring down another one just in case I'd had selected the uh, the dud one. So this one will come out, and uh, and then we'll be able to see. Oh, let's just change the frequency too, just to show you that that is actually working as well. So just using sets so hundred and so it's just going up by uh, ten hertz or so each time that I flick that through, and you can see the waveform on the oscilloscope change as well. So that's all working fine. Uh, so all, everything is working fine, uh, except this OLED is a dead one. So I'm going to pull that out, put this guy in, we'll come back and we'll have a look at how this is supposed to work. 
So I have uh, replaced this OLED display. And in fact, I replaced it twice. So uh, from the same batch, uh, two of these guys were, um, were not working. Um, but this is a new batch and uh, let's try it. So I'll just turn this on. Ah, look at that. So not only do we have uh, 100 hertz showing up here, but we also have a display here indicating what should be happening. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just go through that cycle again. So then you can see the triangle wave and the sawtooth. And there's the square wave and PWM in reverse. And there's our shark and just noise. Uh, and all indicated by here as well. And then, of course, you also got the um, the dialing up here. This goes down by one hertz below um, 100, so that's in the code. You can change all that in the code, of course. So I'll get down to uh, quite low, and then as soon as it hits 100 hertz, it starts moving by uh, by 10. So there you go, there 120, 140, 160, and so on. So if we get up to, let's just arc it up a little bit. It's 520 hertz, and we're reading 533. So, yeah, some adjustment needed in the code there, but um, that's no big deal. Pretty typical. Um, all right, so let's go uh, and hook up now a speaker and see if we can get some noise out of this as well. You're not hearing an awful lot. Um, just background noise picking up. But if I go up through the frequencies, maybe... Yeah, very quiet. But uh, that's the uh, the circuit working at least, and um, yeah, lovely work by uh, by David. Very much appreciated, um, and uh, a very nice function generator that uh, that comes in handy quite a bit actually. Uh, and that's it for this week. See you next time.